The Voice in the Shadows My Encounter with the Unseen Part 1 The street lights cast long, spidery shadows across the deserted sidewalk. My teeth chattered, not just from the cold, but from annoying honeys that wormed its way into my stomach. It was late, later than I should have been out, especially alone. But Sarah had vanished, and the last place anyone had seen her was leaving this very gas station just a few hours earlier. Panic had been a cold fist around my throat since I got Sarah's frantic voicemail, a jumble of words about a strange guy following her, and a dead phone. This wasn't Sarah. She wasn't the kind to freak out easily. So here I was, retracing her steps, the echoing silence pressing in on me. The gas station, bathed in harsh fluorescent light, felt like a beacon in the oppressive darkness. The friendly attendant from before was gone, replaced by a tired-looking man who barely glanced up when I mumbled about needing directions. He pointed vaguely down the deserted road, the same way Sarah had gone. My phone buzzed, a text from my mom, all caps, demanding to know where I was. I typed back a quick looking for Sarah, be back soon, and shoved the phone back in my pocket, a fresh wave of worrying washing over me. The houses lining the street were mostly dark, save for the occasional flicker of a television from behind a drawn curtain. Each darkened window felt like a watching eye, and I quickened my pace, the uneven sidewalk sending jolts of pain through my already sore feet. Halfway down the street, a flicker of movement in the distance caught my eye. A figure hunched over, standing by a lone bus stop, my breath hitched. Could it be hope, fragile and flickering, ignited in my chest? I quickened my pace, calling out Sarah's name. Tentatively, the figure didn't move. As I got closer, the prickling sensation on the back of my neck intensified. The street light cast the figure in an unsettling silhouette, all wrong proportions, to tall, to broad at the shoulders. Sarah, my voice cracked in the stillness. The figure slowly turned, the street light glinted off something metallic in its hand, sending a jolt of terror through me. It wasn't he, Sarah, the face, obscured by the shadows of a hooded jacket, was a blank canvas, emotionless. My feet froze, a primal scream trapped in my throat. The figure started walking towards me, a slow, deliberate pace. My mind raced, every self-defense class I had ever taken a hazy memory. Who are you? I forced the words out, my voice barely a whisper. The figure didn't answer. It kept walking, the glint of metal catching the light with each step. Panic finally overrode fear, I bolted. The sound of my own ragged breaths filled my ears the pounding of my feet a frantic rhythm against the cold pavement. I didn't dare look back, didn't know if the figure was following. I just ran, fueled by pure terror, buildings blurred past in a dizzying rush. A sharp pain lanced through my ankle as I trip on a cracked section of the sidewalk, sprawling onto the rough pavement. Tears streamed down my face, a mixture of pain and raw fear. I forced myself to a sitting position, heart hammering against my ribs, a sob escaped my lips. Through the haze of terror, a thought pierced through. Sarah, where was she? A twig snapped in the distance, my head whipped around, fear a cold vice around my chest. The figure emerged from the shadows closer now. It raised the object in its hand, a length of pipe, glinting menacingly. Adrenaline surged through me, ignoring the throbbing pain in my ankle. I scrambled to my feet and ran again, 
This time, I could hear the pounding of heavy footsteps behind me. My lungs burn, my vision blurred, but I couldn't stop. A dead end, a high brick wall loomed before me, escape cut off. I turned, facing the figure, a cornered animal. It stopped a few feet away, the pipe held loosely in its hand. The silence stretched, thick and suffocating. I held my breath, waiting for the inevitable blow, but it never came. The figure tilted its head, a gesture that felt unnervingly human. Then, in a raspy, distorted voice that set shivers down my spine, it spoke. Sarah? The single word shattered the tense silence. Disbelief flooded me. Was it? But the single word, Sarah, hung in the air, heavy with confusion. My mind reeled, trying to process the impossible. Could it be her? The distorted voice, the menacing pipe. It didn't fit, but the raw desperation in that single word. Sarah, I echoed back, my voice trembling. Is that you? The figure remained silent for a moment, then took a tentative step forward. Hesitantly, I mirrored its movement. The throbbing pain in my ankle a constant reminder of my predicament. As the figure drew closer, the street light cast a flickering illumination on its face. It was obscured by dirt and grime, but the outline, the shape of the jawline. A sliver of doubt wormed its way into my terror. It could be her. What happened to you? I whispered, my voice barely audible. The figure didn't respond, but it lowered the pipe slightly. I took a cautious breath, hope flickering in my chest. Maybe it was Sarah, injured, disoriented. Maybe I could help her. Suddenly, the figure lurched forward, the pipe whipping through the air. A primal scream tore from my throat as I instinctively ducked. The pipe whistled past my ear, the metallic clang echoing in the stillness. This wasn't Sarah. This wasn't a desperate friend. This was something else entirely, something dangerous and unpredictable. Terror flooded back, icy and suffocating. I spun on my heel, the pain in my ankle a distant throb compared to the raw fear coursing through me. I bolted, ignoring the burning in my lungs, the pounding of my heart a frantic drumbeat against my ribs. The figure was faster than I thought possible. A heavy hand slammed down on my shoulder, sending me sprawling into the dirt. The pipe clattered beside me, inches from my grasp. I fought back, a surge of adrenaline fueling my desperate scrabbling. I landed a blow on the figure's arm, connecting with a sickening crunch. It roared, a sound that set chills down my spine. But my victory was short-lived. The figure shoved me back, the force of the blow knocking the breath out of me. I landed hard on my injured ankle, a scream erupting from my lips as a wave of white-hot pain washed over me dot dot. Tears streamed down my face, blurring my vision. The figure loomed over me, the pipe glinting menacingly in its hand. My mind raced, searching for an escape, but there was nowhere to go. This was it. This was the end. Then, a sound pierced the night, a wail growing louder, closer. Headlight sliced through the darkness, momentarily blinding me. The figure froze, its head whipping towards the approaching sound. It was a car, speeding down the deserted street, the screech of brakes filled the air, tires skidding on the pavement. The car lurched to a stop a few feet away from us, dot, dot. A man emerged, his face etched with concern. He looked at me, then at the figure, his jaw dropping in shock. What's going on here? He boom, dot, dot. The figure hesitated then with surprising agility, turned and sprinted into the night, disappearing into the shadows. The man rushed to my side, 
helping me to my feet. Are you okay? What happened? I leaned heavily against him, tears and sobs racking my body. The pain in my ankle was a dull throb now, overshadowed by the sheer terror of what had just happened. I, I don't know, I stammered, finally managing to force out the words. I was looking for my friend, and then, the man helped me into his car, his face grim. We need to get you to the hospital, he said, his voice calm and reassuring. As the car pulled away, I glanced back at the deserted street, a knot of dread tightening in my stomach. The figure was gone, vanished like a nightmare, but its chilling presence lingered, a stark reminder of the terrifying encounter. And Sarah, where was she? Was she still out there, lost and alone in the darkness? The questions gnawed at me, a bitter aftertaste to the lingering fear. The search for Sarah had taken a horrifying turn, leaving me injured and shaken. But I wouldn't give up. Finding her was more important than ever now. I had to know what happened, who that figure was, and most importantly, if Sarah was even still alive. 